Mike the Troop Jackson back with another edition of Fighters Talk. We're here in the historic Houston Heights. Great spot right here, sweet bribery. I'm here with the Kraken. Nah, I'm here with the Kraken. Juan Adams. Juan, how you feeling, my man? Uh, I feel great. You know, a little bit sore, um, but just refueling, refeeding, and loving life right now. I got you. Last, uh, last time we got together, we, we, we were talking about some, some secret products. We are talking about Lil Debbie's. Uh, any, any, any new secret items that you can kind of reveal to us or let them know what's popping? Nah, man, they actually discontinued my uh, my favorite item. I went back to my spot that usually had the stash of them that not a lot of people knew about, the Zebra Cake Nutty Bars, oh. and I'm pissed. You know, they're not there anymore. And, you know, see, every season they release a new, you know, cake. It's either Christmas tree cake, pumpkin spice cake, whatever it is. You know, I had my pumpkin spice cakes. had to cut them out two and a half months ago, and I was a little hurt. But then the Christmas... You know, I was out of fight camp just in time for the Christmas tree cakes. And uh girlfriend bought a whole box of them for me for after the fight. And I was pretty excited about that, actually. So, Man, first of all, even before, we ain't got to the fight yet. But I saw a picture. I think it was maybe the weigh-in day or day before. And it was a bed full of just deliciousness. I saw probably like three or four packs of oreos i saw the golden oreos see that's yeah. how that's how legit you know you are you had the golden oreos not just regular but that special kind yeah that that was the when did you partake in the festivities right after weigh-ins uh, <laughs> so, uh... oh. <laughs> i thought when i heard dc and everybody talking i thought they were just playing this for real every last one of them got consumed and uh if i actually want to step extra i was at the buffet in the hotel before and I asked the waitress like hey um do y'all have whipped cream for a chance she's like well do you have something you want me to put it on I'm like nah just bring me the can <laughs> so she brought the can out and I wasn't about to walk somewhere and buy another can of whipped cream so I just I put it in yeah so I just put it in my bag and <laughs> you know full disclosure if the Hyatt Regency in Milwaukee wants to bill me for that can of whipped cream go for it uh, I regret nothing. I, I went upstairs and I had a lot of fun. I was everything. I was it was a cookie, whipped cream, done. Christmas tree cake, whipped cream, done. Okay, okay. You, you, you. I, I'm seeing this, you know, before we either. What, what's your motivation for? I mean, indulging so much before? Because I know some people say the hardest part of a fight is to make weight. Is this your way of sorting? you know, celebrating the victory of the hardest part of the fight? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, um, I do my best work when I'm happy. And that's that's something that makes me happy. All right? It's one of the things that makes me happy. And so I got to have it. See, that, I don't know if we, we've, we've done, done this before. Have we gone on a trip food tour together? We have not, but there's a spot in the Heights, okay. a couple streets over. Okay. Friday through Sunday, Soul Food Tacos. They are down to have Whoa. be on the True Food Tour. I, I've never heard. Is it a truck or? A food truck outside of a coffee shop. And they do Soul Food Tacos. You can get brisket on the taco, fried chicken on a taco, mac and cheese in a taco. Oh, all right, all right. Black eyed peas in a taco. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That, that, I literally have never heard of black eyed peas in a taco. Oh, yeah. They do it all. I'm telling you, there's one taco they have there called the Hangover, right? They put everything on the menu. It's got greens, all that, you know, and it mixes together. Perfect flavor. But that taco has brought me back to life so many times after a night of debauchery that, um, you know, I will always swear by Soul Taco. See, this is the thing. It, it doesn't matter if it's the Truth Food Tour. It doesn't matter if it's the Kraken. Uh when you need to find the dope food spots, you gotta hit one of us up. Always. Gotta hit one of us up. Always. Last time we spoke, you were competing. Uh, which fight was this for LFA? This yeah, was uh, pro the debut. Pro, pro debut. Uh, but but since then, times have changed. You sort of fulfilled these lifelong goals and dreams, and also shitting on the haters. Yeah. Now you're in the UFC, man. Exactly. You're, you're you're at the big show. 
And uh, you just had your first fight. You were out in Milwaukee. Got a nice Rufus Sports shirt. Shout out to Coach Duke Rufus and those guys. Um, man, it, I knew going into the fight that this is obviously going to be your toughest fight. I, I've seen your previous opponents. I've even seen uh, Chris fight before. And, and I don't want to say I was necessarily worried. I think the only thing I was worried about, which I even mentioned on the Truth About Stuff podcast, was that I was worried that you were going to be so confident that you were going to go out there and just, you were just going to try something new out. And I didn't really see that. I saw I saw one sort of going out there, working on the striking. I know you got touched a little bit. I know you got touched. And, and, and you did what you were supposed to do. And you did what you were supposed to. You got the fight to the ground. At any point, my, what, were you concerned? Were you worried at, at, at any point of the fight? Yeah, um, I was actually worried before the fight because uh, I couldn't fight with my contacts in. That was something new to me. I was fighting blind. Uh, second round, I had the adrenaline dump. So when they broke us from the cage, right, I was already feeling my energy like, kind of start to fade. And I'm like, I know I'm in shape. This shouldn't be happening. But... I thought they were ending the fight right there because I had just landed a punch and the ref comes in and is like, break, break, break. Uh, it was off two body shots and I went upstairs to the head and the ref says, break. So I'm thinking the fight's over. I'm walking to my corner and the ref says, turn around, turn around. I, I know, actually, I, I do remember that at, at point. Of, now, I didn't, I didn't think it, the fight was, well, again, I'm not in there. I don't know what the, the ref is saying. And I think that's Christian's favorite ref, by the way, oh, the, that, that guy. <laughs> um, so I didn't know, but because the camera that they had, they were more focused on the ref and Chris, and you were, you were out, of, out of frame. And then you could tell them, say, like, turn around or something like that. And so now I, I can assume that that's what it was. You thought the fight was over. Right. I thought the fight was over. So I turned around, and, you know, an adrenaline dump affects everyone differently. For me, my mind's still going, and my body just wasn't responding. So there were times he was throwing stuff, and on top of it, I couldn't see anything. So I couldn't see it till it was about eight inches from my face. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to slip. So I'm going to slip, and I'm still getting hit. I'm like, all right, this is happening right now. Cool. And there was another one. There was this right coming, and all I remember is looking at it, seeing it coming, just saying, this is how this is going to go down. All right, we're about to find something out right now. And I didn't brace or anything. Caught me clean. I was like, word. So at that point, I realized, uh, okay, as soon as you see it in your face, just throw something back at him. So that's when his combo stopped coming. Every time it would come, I would hit him, and it would stumble him a little bit. So that's what, that's what happened. And uh, I got the takedown, and the whole time I'm worrying, okay, I can't see. He's bleeding a lot. I don't want his blood in my mouth, eyes, nothing. So I'm not posturing up at all. I'm over here hitting him with these like side things to the head. My head's all the way the fuck over here. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want any of this. And uh, also, he got me in the ear. Got cauliflower ear. That's getting drained tomorrow. So, oh yeah, it's it's yeah, that's from the fight. It was bad. It was flaring up before the fight, but he hit it and it just got bad. So I'm like, all right, word. That's another operation that's got to get done. And uh, but anyway, so once that round was over, and I thought the fight, the ref could have called the fight at the end of that round. He could have called it at the end of the first. Like, homeboy was opened up bad. Uh, but whatever, third round comes, and every round at the beginning of the round, I move around a little bit. I do a little bounce to make sure my energy's there or just to see how I'm feeling, and I game plan for that. And once I felt my energy come back in that round, I'm like, all right, as soon as he gives me something, I'm going to end this fight. So I was going. He was circling, circling. As soon as I landed the jab, I saw him blink, and more blood came out. And that's when I ended through 16 punch, like 16 hit combo. Yeah, it was funny because we were counting DC there. I think they were doing it on the replay. I I threw it on the IG stories for you. Uh, but, yeah, it was one of those just, I think it was like 12, 15 punch combos before the ref stopped it. Uh, and I know you said in the, in the post-fight interview that, you know, you felt you could have finished the fight at, at, at any point. Uh, looking back at it now, like, what do you, how do you feel about your performance? Are you, are you okay? Are you coming, because as a professional, this is your first time getting out of the first round. Like, are you okay with your performance? Are you okay getting out of the first round for the first time? Like, what, what's your thoughts now that we've had a few days to think about it? 
honestly uh, removed from it, you know, I'm very okay with the performance. I'm never going to, like, shit on a win, ever. Uh, but what my, my takeaway from it was, you know, I had a lot of stress. You know, I got tested by USADA be right before my fight. I haven't even been in the UFC six months, and I've been tested three times now at this point. I'm like, well, dude, <laughs> what's going on here? Somebody's telling them I'm on stuff because I've, I've been getting tested more than most people. And but I'm in there and, and I peed and I was like eight m like microliters or milliliters short or whatever. So I had to sit backstage and start that. drinking water. And that like the rehydration is a very delicate process. I took in an extra half gallon of water backstage trying to pee. Before the fight. Yeah. So, yeah, that threw me off. I was stressed about that. You know, I had the adrenaline dump. There's all the nerves and jitters from your first fight. I'm going out there in the first round, and I was fighting blind. You know, I didn't have my contacts in. So I'm out there. I'm just like, as I'm, my last thought through my head was like, man, you know, am I meant to lose this fight? You know, what what is going on? Are all these signs, like, are they trying to make me lose? And uh, I went through it. I bit down. I pushed through it. I got hit uh, more than I've ever been hit before. And, you know, it didn't affect me that much. So, I still had gas left in the third round. I, you know, when I needed to, I got it. I took the opportunity that was there. It took me a few times to recognize an opportunity, but people have to keep in mind this is my ninth fight total. You know, I had four amateur fights. This was my fifth pro fight. I haven't even had double digit fights yet. I've been training mixed martial arts for two years. Like, I thought I did very well, all things considered. You're always going to have room to grow as a martial artist. So that's what I'm going to take from it. I'm going to go back. Me and my coach are going to get together. We're going to game plan for it. Um, we're going to now. We're going to work out when I'm exhausted. So even if I do get an adrenaline dump, I'll still have something left. That's great. And, and see, that's what you know. I, I wanted to ask you is what did you take from this fight? Because like you said, you're you're very new uh, in your MMA career. You know, we know at the heavyweight heavyweights can sort of get to the UFC at a different pace uh, than than most other weight classes. But you've shown that you belong here one thing i did want to ask you is you you know obviously got to the ufc through the contender series for you like was there a, a, a obviously the the venue was going to be different but was there any difference of pressure from on the contender series to your um your pro debut in the ufc yeah uh because contenders contender series for me felt a lot more like a sparring event type deal and for me, that's an audition. I saw that as an audition. And for me, with me, there was less pressure on Contender Series because I wasn't expecting to get signed even if I won that fight. I seen people win those fights and get developmental contracts or get nothing at all, just the 10 grand they say, hey, all right, get on out of here. So I was just expecting to get more exposure from that fight. Um, and so I went in there with very little pressure, very confident. I was like, all right, whatever, whatever happens, happens. You know, if UFC doesn't want me, maybe some promotion in China will, Japan, whatever. I'll go overseas and fight. But for this one, it was like I'm setting the tone for my career in the UFC. So there was a lot more pressure on me for that. I felt it all throughout camp. And, um, you know, I responded the best way that I could. But uh, there's definitely things we can do better for it. But it, it was a lot more pressure. There were more people there, a bigger venue. Um, you know, in the lights, you know, you, you're meeting, you know, all week in the hotel, I'm meeting other established stars within the UFC, people that I looked up to for tips or things that I wanted to emulate when I was getting into the sport. So that was a really big aspect for me. And it really did, um, you know, it played a large mental role, but I, I put it aside when I needed to. There you go. Man, I don't know what's next for you, though. Like, I don't know if. Got to partake of some sweet bribery. Uh, I don't know if we're going to hit up Lil Debbie because I know we, we shouted him out on social media. We did. And they haven't responded. And they haven't responded. Little Debbie. I'm the crap. The disre I'm feeling the disrespect from Little Debbie right now. But. Uh, all the love and support that you give. Yeah, right? All I do, I, I'm giving them free plugs all the time without like no nudging, no guidance, nothing. I'm all about Little Debbie. Taco Bell's been great to me. You know, they haven't changed their menu too much. 
I love it. Lil Debbie took away something very near and dear to my heart, and I just want him to bring it back. That's it. That's it. So, as far as fighting, you know, you got the first one out of the way. We have a little bit of time. Oh, we got 2019 coming up. Uh, what do you feel is going to be next? Do you feel that you're going to get back in there? Or is there anybody in particular you want to fight? We know you sort of threw the name out there a little bit. Uh, what do you feel is next? Um, honestly, I, I don't really care so much who's next. I'm under contract. They got to find me three more fights, period. Um, I want to fight three times in 2019. That's my goal. I want to do a minimum of three fights a year. But what's next for me is uh, I am getting, uh, I'm getting eye surgery next week to fix my vision. So I'm not fighting blind again, you know. And um, we just got to learn and grow in, in every aspect I can. If they offer me a fight, I'll, I'll take it if, it if it's the right career move for me. Um, you know, and that's hard because me, I, I've already said I want to fight the whole roster. So any move is a career move for me. I want every, I want every heavyweight on the roster like I'm I'm about that life but you know we also have to do what's best for me and uh you know the takeaways from the fights uh I mean they pulled up a fight metric I had the highest striking differential of, of anyone on the card I was tied with Edson Barboza you know that's not something you ever think you'd hear in the same conversation Juan, Juan Adams and Edson Barboza had the same <laughs> difference in strikes allowed tied for first uh I think I was struggling by 45 or something like that uh Things like that, you know, landed eight significant strikes to minute. Like, that's not something you think of when you hear Division One wrestler in the UFC. So, that was uh, so you know, that's a good stepping stone. That's progress. We're it's one thing we were looking to build upon, and we're just gonna keep building, keep expanding my game. And when my next opportunity does come, you're gonna see an even better fighter. And that's the goal. There you have it, one the Kraken Adams, sort of giving you a. A game plan, a blueprint of what 2019 will look like for him. Uh, the Kraken cares enough to bring out some delicious pastries. Man, uh, look at that. The Kraken really does care, my guy. Got, uh, got a What's this? Present for Mike the Truth, I was inspired by uh, your posts on Instagram the other day with your Dora Milaje. So we went a uh, little Black Panther and his... Uh, Dormalaji back there. <laughs> the Kraken really does care. Juan Adams, man, as always, is a pleasure. I appreciate it, my guy. That's dope. I'll put that on shit. You see the one I got for Christian. So, like, when you walk past it, it's